Hey guys, what's up? My name is Dee and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing an air fryer dupe review with you guys. This one is super affordable. So if you're on the market for an air fryer like item that doesn't take up space, it's super affordable and it pretty much works, then this video is definitely for you. I'm going to break down everything that I know about this with my first experience using it. That way you guys can be fully equipped to know if this item is the right one for you. But before I go ahead and share my entire review and demo with you all, I do want to remind you that if you're new here, I'd love for you to go ahead and subscribe and also give this video a thumbs up and turn on your notifications so that way you don't miss out on any videos coming up next on my channel. If you're new here, I post a ton of Costco videos. I take you in the store, show you everything in the warehouse. I take you back home and I share my hauls with you guys. I'm starting to share some recipes. And of course, I have always loved sharing product reviews because I like to be honest and I think more honest reviews are needed. So with all that being said, if you're into any of that stuff, again, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and let's get right into this video. All right, so this is what the air frying pan looks like. This is by the brand Nordic Wear. It's available at Costco for $28.99. And this advertises that you can air fry pretty much anything in your oven and it's supposed to work. So, you know, obviously with that price point, $28.99, I was like, yeah, I want to try that. Air fryers are crazy expensive and who has time to spend that much money on something if you don't even know if you're going to like it? Well, that's what I thought. I also got this on a sale, so I actually paid $22.99, which made it even more appealing to try because it was just a little bit over $20. And for experiment purposes, I mean, that's a pretty good deal. So this is what my pan looks like after the first use. And really quickly, I also wanted to show you what the packaging sort of looked like. So this is pretty much the sleeve over the rack. And this is again by the brand Nordic Wear. Nordic Wear is a really good brand. Usually they have things that are so well trusted. You kind of always know that you're getting something with a really good quality. So that's a bonus feature about this. Now it does say that it's an extra large oven crisp baking tray. It is all of that. It's so big. It takes up the entire rack. Like literally you can't fit anything else there if you're putting this on a rack. And it does air crisp things, so that's a good thing. And okay, so now it's telling you that you can air crisp roast meats, bacon, fries, tots. And I figured it definitely says bacon on here, so why not test that? And it says fries, but what about homemade fries? Because I feel like homemade fries are harder to get crisp than regular fries. They pretty much already have that crisping mechanism built in there already. And I also wanted to do some sausages because sausage is super easy to just bake on a regular tray in the oven. I wanted to know if there'd be like a difference doing it on this baking tray versus just like baking it on a flat tray in my oven. So I wanted to test that out to give you guys a real life example of if it works for pretty much anything because I mean sausage is like so easy it's like almost impossible to ruin unless you burn it and we'll get into that a little bit more. On the back side of this sleeve, it also gives you instructions. So it lets you know that you are not to bake anything in this pan in the oven over 400 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very important because it says that on the back and you definitely need to know. Don't go putting stuff on there at like 450 or higher and expecting it to work because it's probably not going to work. So just make sure you're reading the instructions, which is why I'm here. I'm here to help you understand the instructions. So yeah, you want to make sure that it's not higher than 400. You want to make sure that you never put this in the dishwasher. This is not dishwasher safe completely. I mean, it's not going to get completely ruined if you put it in the dishwasher, but it might take off the coating or make it look duller than like it really is in like real life. So this is like a hand wash thing. And if you're not a hand wash type of person, then this product is definitely not for you. What I also love about the back of the instructions is that it lets you know how long to do it for your bacon depending on what you like. Whether you like it super crispy 
or a little bit on the soft side. It lets you know the minutes, the temperature, <laughs> everything, how to line it up. And they pretty much walk you through the whole process. This is supposed to be like foolproof, essentially, because they really take the time to like let you see how this is supposed to look. So I really appreciated that it came with all this information. Otherwise, I would have definitely put my stuff in the oven at a higher temperature. And I would definitely also line things in a way that I shouldn't because I, mean, I didn't read the instructions. But in this case, I did. So what I'm going to do now is demo exactly how this works and how to use it based on the dinner idea that I'm making for my family. If you guys don't know, I have a family for mom, dad, two girls, and yeah, I'm just trying to prep a quick, easy weeknight dinner for the family. So I'm going to share that with you and then I'll be back to share my pros and cons with you all because I'm sure you want to know that as well. things off with the pros. The number one pro about this is that it's space saving and air fryer is much bigger and obviously more expensive. So this is a more affordable option and it saves space because you can pretty much store this in your oven since it's going to take up an entire rack anyways. I don't know where else you'd put something this big. So you can store it in your oven and it's going to save space because you don't have to find an alternative space to store this in your home. Another pro is that this is so versatile, you can literally use this to do like anything, bacon, meat, veggies, fruits, you can apparently like dry your fruits and make it into like dried fruit, dehydrate them, I think is a proper term. You can do so much with this. I haven't tried every single thing, but I love that it's so versatile because why buy multiple things when you can do everything in one? That's definitely a pro that I look for when I'm trying a new product. 
Another pro is that this is super easy to use. I mean, as long as you read the instructions and understand what you should do and what you shouldn't do, basically the do's and the don'ts of this product, you'll be golden. It's so easy to use. And another pro and the last pro I wanted to mention is that this is pretty much burn proof. If you are one of those people that are constantly burning things, this is pretty much like your saving grace because it is so hard to burn things in this pan, trust me. I know it is so hard to burn things in this pan. So that is a definite pro, one that's unexpected, but a highlight because sometimes you can have things in the oven for a certain amount of time and it just needs a little bit longer. And then that one extra minute or that one extra two minute is like the definition of crisp, like burnt to a crisp compared to before when it just needs to be done a little bit more. So that is another bonus I wanted to share with you all. Now, in terms of the cons, I do wanna let you know that this takes forever and a day, and a year, and a month, and forever and an eternity to make anything. Like honestly, when I make bacon in the oven on a regular tray, it literally takes me like 10 to 12 minutes. Never anything longer than that because number one, I do it on a super high temperature, and then number two, I'm watching it like a hawk because bacon is just one of those things that can burn super easily in the oven. The bacon that I was making in this video took over 30 minutes. That's like triple the time that it would normally take me in real life, and honestly, I don't really know how I feel about that. And I also wanted to mention that my potato wedges were in the oven for at least like an hour and maybe 15 minutes maybe an hour and 30 minutes. It, they were in there forever, forever. It took forever. They were already done before the hour mark, but I just decided to keep them in there. That way you can get like more of a golden color on the outside. For me, it's not like ready until like it starts to get a little bit of brown on it. So I just kept it in there until everything was finished because I pretty much needed my potatoes to actually look like they were getting super crisp and charred because that's what I like with homemade fries. So it pretty much taking forever to prep whatever you're making is the number one con. The second con and the only other con that I can come up with this product is it is so hard to clean. <laughs> I mean like so hard to clean. Watch this footage of me scrubbing my life away trying to get this clean. I mean it's like it's going to speak for itself. You guys are going to be like whoa oh my gosh because <laughs> I am like oh my gosh it took forever. Trying not to speak, pretend that I'm dreaming. I smell your breath, not listening, but I still hear you screaming. Going under. One step away till you hear what I'm saying. Sounds like thunder. And the clouds are closing in. You see, I know this, but the last days in real life I've noticed. Losing focus, breaking up from our life as we know it. If so. All right, so now you've seen how much elbow grease you need to actually get this clean. I bet you want to know what it looks like after it's clean. So on the back of the instructions, it did let me know that I shouldn't use anything like really harsh or abrasive to scrub it because it will scratch it. <laughs> 
I read the instructions, I knew what not to do, but still I used something hard because I was scrubbing forever and a day and it wouldn't come off. I used so much of my Dawn Power Wash spray, which normally works like in an instant to try to help this to get clean. And the only thing that really helps it to get clean is to run it directly underwater and scrub at the exact same time with the hard part of the sponge and not the soft part because it was like a complete disaster. Otherwise, I felt like I would have been scrubbing for three days if I kept at it the way I was going with the soft side. So this is what it looks like together. I mean, it pretty much looks just as good as new, which is a good thing. I'm so happy to report that this part did not get damaged at all. It is definitely still having all its coating on there and it's so clean. There is nothing left on here, but I did find that this is much easier to clean if you're using like a cleaning brush. Just make sure that your brush isn't like super harsh because it just might scratch everything off of this. So that's my tip that I do want you guys to know about. And then there's this part of it. Oh my goodness. This poor tray has been through so much. It just deserves a standing ovation for surviving because I thought I was just going to have to bring this back and return it. I mean, I literally had no hopes left for it. However, for all the scrubbing that I've done, I'm happy to report that there's not that many scratches there. So I'm going to come a little closer and hope that you guys can see this. So I'm not sure if you can see this exactly, but there's like scratches all over. You can definitely tell where I've been scrubbing super hard and it did leave some stains on here as well that will probably never come out again. And honestly, it's not going to be the end of the world. Like who really cares about the stains on this? But if you're one of those people who are looking for something that's never going to stain and never going to look used on the first go, this is probably not for you because this is after one use and I mean... I hope you can see what I'm showing you right now, but this this is what we're looking like after just one use. I also really quickly wanted to touch on how much this weighs. I'm not going to give you like weight or anything like that because I really don't think that's going to be helpful information for you, but this is a little bit on the heavy side, but it's still lighter than a cast iron pan. And if you know anything about cast iron pans, you know that they're super heavy. So in comparison to that, this is not heavy at all. However, this is much heavier than your traditional baking tray. So just keep that in mind in the event that you just don't have a lot of hand or upper body strength. You do need to have somewhat of a little bit of strength to deal with this and you're definitely going to need some big muscles to be able to scrub because you're going to be scrubbing your life away. All right, so now I'm going to just let you know if I would recommend this product. I would recommend this product to anyone who is prone to burning things. If you're a burner, everything you touch that goes in the oven burns. This is for you. This is pretty much foolproof in the burning department because it's not laying flat on anything exactly. It's so hard for the bottom layer to get burnt. So normally like when I do my sausages, the bottom layer is like a little bit on the burnt side and then the rest is like perfection. This pretty much had my sausage looking like it wasn't ever going to be burnt and all the juices were just like continuously flowing through it. So that is a bonus. I also recommend only using this baking tray if you're going to be air frying or air crisping things in your oven that are not going to produce a lot of oil. So like my sausage produced a lot of oil and it's probably the reason why there's so many stains and so much that I had to scrub off of here and also bacon. They did say that you can line it with aluminum foil to reduce the mess and make cleanups so much easier, which I should have taken advantage of that. But I wanted to test it out without the aluminum foil just to test if this is actually going to work without the aluminum and how it works. Sometimes when you add things like that, it changes the way that it cooks or whatever. So I just wanted to use it as is to give you guys the best experience possible with just using it as it is. So with that being said, I wanted to recommend always lighting it with aluminum foil. Otherwise, you're going to be like me and stressing your life away trying to clean this up before the next day comes because it literally takes you such a long time. Also, I wanted to recommend that you plan ahead if you're using this. This is not a time-saving task. In fact, it takes more time to prepare foods with this than it does to just use a regular baking tray. So if you have the time, start early, get this in the oven. That way it can just do its thing for as long as you need it to without dying of starvation in the process because otherwise it's going to take a while. I mean, like it's literally going to take a long time. So I'm pretty sure you're wondering, do I actually like this? I've said so many things. What are my actual thoughts? 
I think that this is a great size tray. It's so large, you can literally prep an entire dinner all at one time if you're into like sheet pan dinners and things like that. I would recommend it for that. I also love that it has like the little grilling grid there because it really does help when you don't want things to like just stick to the bottom and burn on the bottom but not be fully cooked on the top. That is a definite bonus. So all in all, I like it, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't love it. I don't love anything that's gonna require me to do so much work when I'm cleaning up. So I'm gonna test this out again on foods that are not conducive to producing a lot of oil. I'm also gonna make sure that in the future, whenever I use this, I always line the bottom with aluminum because otherwise, I'm gonna lose it. Like I'm gonna legit lose it with all the scrubbing I had to do. And with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this review and this demo of an air frying dupe that I found available at Costco. So if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Thank you again so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.